We spent a lot of time watching YouTube videos about Morocco before we traveled there. We couldn't help but notice that most of these videos are made by reasonably young people. So we decided to make our own. We're not young, but we decided to travel for a month with backpacks and only the vaguest idea of where we were going. So welcome to our traveling series where you can watch short to the point videos showing each place that we went to. Enjoy. We went to Moulay Idris from Fez. To get there, it's a quick taxi from the Medina and Fez to the train station, then an easy and comfortable 40-minute train ride to Meknes. Finally, you're going to take a 30-minute Grand Taxi to Moulay Idris. This was our first Grand Taxi experience. These are basically large cars that hold seven passengers. They congregate around taxi stands and leave whenever they're full. They are relatively cheap and comfortable and can be found all over Morocco. A Grand Taxi is a great way to get around, although be warned that you might wait quite a while for it to fill up. If you're in a hurry, just buy the remaining seats yourself. Okay, so uh, we're in uh, Moulay Indris, and uh, we've learned about the Grand, the Grand Taxi. We've learned how about uh, the transportation to the Delta. Now we're climbing up a hill. A hill on our way second. to La Colombe guest house. There are really only two places to stay in Moulay. There's Dar Zurhon and La Colombe Blanche. Both are on a hill near each other. We stayed in La Colombe, which was run by a very friendly family who took great care of the place and cooked our meals for us. More on this later. We paid about 75 Canadian dollars a night and stayed in a comfortable room on the roof terrace. We had a wonderful view of the town and of the distant Volubilis. Volubilis, by the way, is about four and a half kilometers away, which is a bit too far to walk. We took a taxi from Moulay, then easily found another at Volubilis to return. Because we were in Moulay Idris during Ramadan, all restaurants and cafes were closed. Small convenience stores were open, as was the little market where you, we could buy fruit and bread. Because of this, we ate breakfast and dinner in our guest house cooked by the family. Both meals were very traditional and enjoyable. We saw a number of very local cafes and a few restaurants in town, so we imagined that during normal times, finding good food should be relatively easy. In Volubilis, there's only one tourist restaurant, which was open. We had the usual local food, um, and they also had pizzas, fries, and other snacks, as well as much-needed water. So now we're in Moulay Indris, Zerhan, and uh, we've, uh, we're walking around outside. Uh, got a little bit lost, got stuck in the town, which is built on a on a hill, and uh, now we're um, we're on a road, and we are um, trying to find downtown. Maybe get some supplies for tomorrow when we visit Volubilis for the day. We walked around Moulay Idris, which was very quiet and mostly closed during Ramadan. 
It's a small place without a huge number of sights to see, but we liked its rural nature after the craziness of Fez. For most travelers, the real reason for staying here is to visit Volubilis, which is, as I said, four and a half kilometers away. And we find ourselves in Volubilis on the windiest day that's ever occurred in all of human history. Volubilis is Morocco's only real Roman town. It was set up about 2,000 years ago, profiting from the olive trade. It was in Roman hands for only about 250 years before being taken over by local tribes, which inhabited the area for 700 years. Earthquakes and the need for construction materials reduced the town to its current ruined state. More recently, efforts have been made to restore some of its more impressive structures, such as the Basilica and Triumphal Arch. Well, don't expect to find Pompeii or Ephesus here. Volubilis has had a very rough 1,000 years, and much of it is destroyed. That being said, it's well worth a visit just to see the beautiful floor mosaics, which have somehow survived all this time. We were surprised at how beautiful the landscape was. Moulay Idris is on a hill with fantastic views of the surrounding countryside. Interestingly, most houses in the town are built on a fairly steep hill, which uh, we managed to get lost in and walked all over it trying to find a way out. Regarding Volubilis, we were surprised at how incredibly windy it was when we were there. It was like a typhoon. We were also surprised by how large of an area it occupies and by the fact that a significant portion of the town still lies underground awaiting future discovery. Malay Idris is a small, friendly town without any security concerns at all. We walked around for a few days and never encountered any problems. The local people were friendly and welcoming. If you happen to be here during Ramadan, be sure to set up meals with your guest house. Otherwise, you are going to be very, very hungry. Volubilis was largely empty while we were there. The only thing to watch out for uh, was losing your hat in the incredible wind. Most tourists visit Volubilis for an hour or so on their way to other destinations. We would suggest, if you can, spend a night or two in the local town of Moulay Idris. It gives you an insight into a slower, more rural Morocco. By staying in the town, there's no reason to rush through Volubilis. Take your, eye, take your time, close your eyes, and imagine what it must have been like to be at the fringes of the Roman Empire 2,000 years ago. Mm-hmm.